WWE Fastlane happened Sunday night, and here is my recap. So let's start off with the kickoff show. The WWE United States Champion Riddle versus Mustafa Ali. And, you know, when I made my video on my top 10 favorite superstars, if you didn't see that, I suggest you watch it. Mustafa Ali was number 10 for me, and I became a huge fan of Mustafa Ali. And I know, you know, Retribution has not been doing good, but the role he's been given, he succeeded in. And their match on Raw, I would say, was better than this one. I'd give this a match a 6.5 out of 10. It was a good show for a, it was a good match for a, a pre-show, a kickoff show. And I don't know why this wasn't on the main show. Retribution, are they broken up, you know? I'm curious, you know, we saw a double choke slam, and I thought this match should have been on the main show, and I'll tell you which show should have been on the pre-show. So I'm gonna give that a 6.5. And then let's start with the women's uh, tag team. So this started the show. Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler versus Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. In my opinion, not the best match to open the show. Um, I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 10. And the storyline is progressing, though. It is progressing. You know, pretty much now, Bianca Belair is the vet. Uh, sorry, is not the veteran. Bianca Belair is the rookie, and Sasha Banks is the veteran, and they're building it. But the storyline is still bad. I'm, I'm going to say I, I, it is bad. And then Braun versus Elias, 1 out of 10. If I could do 0, I would give this a 0. I'm like, okay, this pay-per-view is off to a terrible start, and you guys know me. I'm like, Fastlane is a filler. It's a filler of a pay-per-view. We all know it. And when they gave us this match, I realized how bad Fastlane was. Give me a 1 out of 10. This is... I, I almost fell asleep at this point. Never give me this match again. I never want to see this match again. Braun is the most boring character on the roster. He is so boring, man. His character is terrible. This is him. Braun! Dun, 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 dun. Hands. Get me these hands. Braun. Like, come on, bro. I could write better than that. Character is boring. It's not Braun Strowman's fault, obviously. You know, it's it's the creative's fault. But, you know. But Braun is in good shape, though. So, I'll give him that. Um, The other match was the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Big E versus Apollo Crews. I was very high on this match. In fact, I wanted this match to be on WrestleMania. It still could be a main event, or not main event. It still could be a WrestleMania match, but we've already seen it. I don't know why they gave us this match at Fastlane and not WrestleMania. This this was a very good storyline heading into this match, and the match was good, but the ending was terrible, and that's why I'm giving it a 5.5 out of 10. The match was good, like I said, but was that a botch roll-up? That's the only reason why I'm giving it a 5.5. It's because of the ending. I don't know if that was a bot, a botch uh, pin. Because that was like a six count. <laughs> but I don't know if that was a botch pin or just, you know, WWE covering up, you know, Apollo Crews' new character. Like I said, if you're going to give someone a new character and then give them a title shot, they need to win the, the match. They need to. How are you going to build a new character and then, you know, fight for the title and then lose? I guess that was their way of covering up Apollo Crews, but they should have put this match at WrestleMania and had Apollo winning. I hope they do have another match at WrestleMania, but I can't get into this story anymore. It's, I don't know, unless if they could keep me interested in the next three weeks. But like I said, Apollo should have won this match and that ending did it for me. It was, it was bad. Next match, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Seth Rollins. 8 out of 10 match. I knew they fought before in the past. I knew we were going to get a good match. Both of them are very good in the ring. And they have they have good chemistry. So this was an 8 out of 10. Very good match. And we all know we're going to get Cesaro versus Rollins at WrestleMania. I'm all for it. Cesaro's first match at WrestleMania will be against Seth Rollins. Now, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure it's happening. <laughs> I hope it happens. And then another very, very good match. Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. I wouldn't consider this match of the night, if I'm being honest. I'm giving this a 9.5 out of 10, all right, guys? 
call me a mark, call me whatever you want. I don't care, man. This match was very good. Um, you know, it was hard hitting, physical, lots of good spots, especially that LED spot. That was a very good spot. And Sheamus, like I said, he is given us his best matches of his career, some of the best matches of 2021. Him and Drew have really good chemistry in the ring. And I hope Sheamus somehow could be in the triple threat match. Him versus Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. I don't know. Am I the only one that wants a triple threat match? And then Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. Now, no one knew what we were getting in this match. We knew The Fiend was going to return. But I'm not a whole fan of this, like, you know, like, whatever the hell they're doing with this black blood and all these, like, I don't know, cut scenes with fire. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I wanted a match. I physically wanted, like, a match. Like, Randy Orton RKOing Alexa Bliss. And somehow I, I got this match right. I said Alexa Bliss was going to win. Everyone thought Randy Orton. But I wanted like, you know, some superplexes, ran, or RKOs, anything. It wasn't a wrestling match though. It was just Alexa Bliss playing mind games with Randy Orton. We all knew The Fiend was going to return, which he did in that spot looked sick. With his hand coming under the ring. And then he, uh, Sister Abigail, something. I, I don't know the move. I forget what it's called. Randy Orton, Alexa pins him in a very weird way. One, two, three, match is over. The Fiend returns. LOL. Nah, though, but it before, before d I say something. Actually, no, I'm going to say it right now. You can't overuse The Fiend. That's why no one cared about him. When he debuted, every single Monday Night Raw, he'd come out. He needs to be an attraction. People want to see him. You can't have him every week. It'll get stale. And just like I said, we saw him on Monday Night Raw last night. We can't have this every single week. Save The Fiend for WrestleMania. I don't want to see him until WrestleMania. Bring out Bray Wyatt, not The Fiend. It will get stale. Trust me. All right? I know it brings in ratings, views. I One... I don't want to see The Fiend every week. It will get stale. And two, don't put him near the title anytime soon. Or else everything's going to happen again like last time. The whole Goldberg thing and then he's just going to get buried. Please, no title pitcher. And I don't want to see him every week. Let's move on to the main event. WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. 10 out of 10. I think this was match of the night. It was... A very good match, and it progressed throughout the whole match. And there was moments where I actually thought Daniel Bryan could have won the match. It, 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 I almost, like, I knew. I knew Roman was going to win this match, right? But at some points, I really thought Daniel Bryan was going to win. And he even tapped out Roman Reigns. And obviously, Edge didn't care. Did Edge turn heel? I don't know. A lot of questions on SmackDown. SmackDown is going to be a very good show. I think Daniel Bryan is going to be in the triple threat match. You know, if you look at the WrestleMania poster, he is on the poster beside Roman Reigns and Edge. So I'm pretty sure Daniel Bryan is going to be in this triple threat match. And no, I'm pretty sure, yeah, 100% he's going to be in the WrestleMania match. You guys know me. I don't want the triple threat match. I'd rather see Roman versus Edge one-on-one. -on -one. And I know I'm in the minority, but that's what I want. But either way, you know, I'm fine with a triple threat match. I know it will be a better match for a triple threat than a one-on-one. -on -one, but in my opinion, I'd rather see the one-on-one. -on -one. But yeah, so that was Fastlane. Um, so for my scores, I added them all up, divided by how many matches there were. And it was a 6.4 out of 10. So that was my rating of Fastlane. Like I said, terrible start. The first two matches was terrible. And I'm like, okay, this is fast lane. This is the fast lane I know. And then the pay-per-view got better and better and better and better. And if you got rid of the whole Braun and Elias thing, I think this match this pay-per-view would have been better. And if you put and if you made Apollo win that match, I'm pretty sure this would have got at least over a seven. But 
that will do it wrestlemania is in a couple of weeks guys i can't wait april 10th wrestlemania what did you guys think of this pay-per-view i thought it was a very good like the matches were good they're very good but it wasn't like anything special like we we could see half of these matches on a smackdown or monday night raw like ali versus riddle we literally saw that the women's tag titles we could see that on an episode of smackdown Elias versus Braun. We could see that on a match on main event, <laughs> let alone Monday Night Raw. And Drew versus Sheamus, we saw twice on Raw, but I knew it was going to be a great match. Daniel Bryan versus Roman was kind of the only pay-per-view worthy match. And I guess you could say Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. But yeah, and Apollo Crews versus Big E, that was a pay-per-view worthy match. Well, storyline, yes. <laughs> storyline, yes. Not, not the match, but tell me what you guys think down below. Other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and peace.